a little while that I have honestly seen wow as much as I love high performance vehicles I guess I'm gonna have to reshoot this scene now Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm at Holmes Honda, and this is the 2022 Honda Ridgeline. It's kind of known as two different things, honestly. It's the car-like truck because it rides so well thanks to the independent front and rear suspension. Driving down the road is quite different than the experience in most other trucks. Although this isn't a full-size truck, it's considered a mid-size truck, but still has all the features and functionality of a truck. It can tow up to 5,000 pounds. It has plenty of space in the bed. In fact, actually the cargo space in the bed for your payload is a little bit different than most trucks because you don't have as large of a fender well sticking up into the interior of the bed. So that means hauling things such as sheets of plywood or maybe sheet rock is going to be a lot easier because it's going to sit more flat than it would otherwise. It can also haul people. Those are things that trucks can do. But for those who like to refer to this of the second thing that the Ridgeline is known as, as not being a real truck, tell me down in the comments exactly why you believe that. But the reality is this. Honda continues to build and sell quite a few Ridgelines every year because there is a segment for this truck. For 2021, Honda did make some exterior changes and a few interior changes as well, including what you see on the front end. From basically the front pillar forward, well, everything has been redesigned and really given more of a boxy look to look more like a truck. And while that is likely not to satisfy the critics of the Ridgeline, still, like I say, there's a lot of people who buy this truck. There is only one engine and transmission option available for this Ridgeline, but still, like I say, it tows 5,000 pounds. That's not bad for a mid-sized truck and not bad for all-wheel drive. By the way, that's another thing that carries over from 2021 that was a change that Honda made, and that is the fact that the front-wheel drive option for the Ridgeline is no longer available. That started last with last year's model this is still last year if you talk about 2022 which this model is so every ridge line on every trim level is now all wheel drive and if you don't know the difference between all wheel drive and four wheel drive you have to put your four wheel drive truck into four wheel drive from two wheel drive all wheel drive is full time all wheel drive all the time and under the hood is the 3.5 liter v6 it makes 280 horsepower 262 pound feet of torque and power makes its way from the engine to that all-wheel drive system via a nine-speed automatic transmission. Like I say, that's what you get no matter what Ridgeline you purchase. Same engine, same transmission. The only options available. Maybe we'll see some changes in the future with that. Tell me down in the comments if that's something you would like to see. As far as this combination goes, here are the estimated gas mileage numbers from Honda. 18 miles per gallon city, 24 out on the highway. And for every 100 miles that you drive, Honda says you should burn 4.8 gallons of gas. All of that comes to a combined total of 21 miles per gallon. Here on the sport trim level, nope, there are no turn signals built into the power side view mirrors. Notice I said power, not power folding, but you can adjust the mirror position with power but you have to fold the mirrors manually. And let's talk a little bit about the remote. As you can see, there's not a lot here, but the good news is, of course, that you do have remote start on the sport trim level. That means you're gonna have remote start on all trim levels, obviously, of the Ridgeline, if this is something you want to pick up. And there are steps right here to make getting in and out of the Ridgeline a little bit easier. Not that it's necessary, but for those who may wish to use that, they can. And I like the fact that that is covered in grip tape, so when it's raining, nobody's going to slip trying to get in and out of this truck. And by the way, since I'm a person of curiosity, tell me down in the comments, what is your current daily driver? And when do you plan to replace it? And what do you plan to replace it with? Payload numbers for the Ridgeline come in between 1,509 and 1,583 pounds. And you do have a multi-function tailgate here, which, by the way, 
isn't that heavy, but of course you can open it the conventional way, but if you don't know, right here under the Sport and All-Wheel Drive logo, you will find a release to open it outwards like this. And there's a couple of different reasons why that is super useful. And by the way, something very interesting here, you do have some lighting inside of the bed here. And it makes me think of the old question that so many people jokingly ask. Well, I guess they're joking. Maybe they're serious. When you close your refrigerator door, does the light go off? Well, it's kind of the same way here. There's lights that go off in here when you close the bed. But what's interesting is when it's open like this, that's when the cargo lights come on. When you just open it the conventional way that I did earlier, the lights don't come on automatically. But you can see when you close the bed here, or the tailgate, I should say, that the lights do go off. So nobody should be questioning that. Just something interesting that I saw there. But something else that I really like here is the fact that you have the lockable, by the way, bed trunk. So it's a literal multitasker. I talk a lot about the multitaskers here. You can use this to store whatever you can get to fit down there. Keep it nice and dry when you're driving in the rain or in the snow. All-wheel drive, of course, is going to definitely give you great capabilities in the snow. But you can also fill this with ice. And I love the fact that you can even have partitions to help separate different areas into little compartments of their own. If you want certain drinks or snacks or whatever in a certain area, that's awesome. And the cool thing about it, very convenient, is that there is a drain plug. So when the ice is all melted down and you're ready to drain that, well, you just reach down in there, pull the drain plug out, and well, you're ready to go with that process. And of course, you don't have that tire repair kit that I know a lot of you don't like. Definitely not in favor of that, that's for sure. You have a spare tire here. Now, that's one reason why you want the tailgate to swing open as it does because of the location of the spare tire. There's a couple of large wing nuts you'll take off, remove those, and then you can pull this whole tray out and then there's a mount system right here that you can basically hook the tray onto to gain access to the spare tire and all of the tools to change that, making this truck very versatile in a lot of ways. And like I said, you can see, of course, that there is plenty of space here for whatever you want to fit and a lot more space, obviously, because you don't have the those fender wells coming up as high, although they do come up just a little bit into the bed here, but not the way you would see with most trucks. Stepping into the back seat of the Ridgeline, just taking a quick look, here's what you have. And one thing I am a little surprised at is there is no door bin here, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a lot of space back here for your rear seat passengers. And there is additional storage space. I'm gonna pull up on this lever right here and see if I can get that to stay in place. And you can do that on both sides with these seats. And the good news about that is it greatly increases cargo space. And if you have somebody sitting here in the rear, notice there is no transmission tunnel protruding up into the floor. So whoever's sitting in the middle seat right here is going to be a lot more comfortable. And to put these down, of course, you're just going to do that, lock that back into place. You do have the, the dual air conditioning vents, but here on the sport trim level, you won't find any connectivity here in the rear, but you will find the fold-down armrest with the cup holders built in and a small amount of storage for some snacks back there, whatever your rear seat passengers can fit. And what about the bottle test? Well, as you can see, the conventional size water bottle is going to fit with no problem. And just a note to avoid any frustration, let's say you just bought a brand new 2022 Ridgeline and you're getting into the back seat just to test things out for yourself and then you notice that the door does not open. Well, that's because the child safety lock is on. It's located right here. It's in the upright position right now. That means that it is not active. If you push it into the down position, then it is active. And that is, of course, not only here on the passenger side door in the rear, but also on the left-hand or driver's side door in the rear. When it comes to the front seat, of course, everything carries over from 2021 into the 2022 model year, but everything is still very easy to learn if you haven't had the technology that's here before. You still have the push button shifter that I always like to ask people about. Would you rather see the push button shifter or would you like to see a column shifter in future models of the Ridgeline? We still have the 8-inch touchscreen. Again, something simple to learn and use if you haven't ever operated anything like this before. 
And something I thought was very interesting coming over from 2021, but something we didn't see in previous years to the 2021 model year with the Ridgeline, and that is the fact that there is a knob for controlling the radio, turning it on and off, and the volume function. Apparently, a lot of owners said that was something they wanted, so that's something Honda actually brought back for the 2021 model year, and of course, we're going to continue to see moving forward. As we get out on the road for our test drive, of course, one of my favorite features, you have all the features and functionality of your typical truck, but you also have this car-like ride quality that makes such a big difference. And as we cruise down the road here, I chose this particular route because, well, even though you can hear some of the road noise, it's definitely not as bad as you might expect or receive in some trucks. That's another advantage of the Ridgeline. It's actually quite quiet inside the cabin here. I'm not sure how well that translates into my lapel mic, but let's do this. As is the case on any road, if one lane is going to be more rough than the other, well, it's going to be the right-hand lane because typically that's more heavily traveled. And so as we switch over, trust me when I say this road is very rough, and I'm telling you what, I am impressed at how this ridgeline is soaking up these bumps. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. You definitely can't really tell on the GoPro, I don't think, from this particular angle, and it just doesn't pick it up because of the stabilization. This road is very much washboarded out. I'm doing 65 miles per hour through here, which is the speed limit. And so to have that experience is quite impressive. And I'm going to change over to what a lot of people call sequential mode. That's really more sport mode than it is sequential mode, even though some of the correction Nazis are going to say differently down in the comments. But the difference is noticeable immediately. In fact, I'm having to back off of the gas pedal just a little bit because it changed the way the truck is accelerating down the road. And unfortunately today, I can't test all of the different driving modes simply because we don't have the terrain to do it. I would love to try one of these ridge lines in the snow and ice. I don't know that we're gonna get another shot at that this year or maybe early next year here in Northwest Louisiana like we did last year. I actually had a Jaguar F-Pace that was all wheel drive that I drove for about a week in the snow and ice and had absolutely no problem whatsoever. And I would imagine that this ridge line is gonna be very similar to, to that, I should say. Drive over some railroad tracks there. And accelerating is not a problem. I don't have the gas pedal on the floor. I'm just kind of cruising down the road at about, oh, half throttle, if that much. And I'm already a little over the speed limit right there without really making an effort to do that. It would be fun to try some towing and just see what it's like or how the truck handles with a heavy payload. So what about everything else? Everything's easy to use, easy access here, easy to learn, especially if you're somebody who has never had a vehicle that has the kind of technology that you'll find in the interior of the truck today that we're driving. I know a lot of people are afraid of that, but trust me when I say, especially with Honda, it's super easy to use, super easy to learn, and you'll be glad that you did once you get used to all of that but just an overall comfortable driving experience. And one thing I like here is the fact that the comfort of the seats aids in the comfort of the overall truck with the suspension. Sometimes you have one or the other that cancels itself out. You might have comfortable seating, but a suspension system that isn't so good at soaking up the bumps, or it might be vice versa, where the seats are not comfortable, but the suspension works well, and it just kind of just defeats the purpose almost. Good balance here with the Ridgeline. Overall, a very good choice if you're looking for a mid-sized truck. I always like to hear from all of you down in the comments. If you plan to purchase a 2022 Honda Ridgeline, tell me what trim level and what will its primary purpose be? Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Homes Honda for loaning me this truck for the day. And of course, to all of you for taking the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that is right over here on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.